Warm greetings from the high 10. It is Everyday Shenanigans on this Thursday, October 29, 2020. I'd like to bring you a story I just discovered. It's a very heinous story. It's out of Chicago. Um, my home. Just uh, crazy nonsense going on right now in the world. A lot of buffoonery and craziness. And um, sometimes I think I shouldn't even be bringing these stories because it's just ridiculous that they go on and on and on every day and it's like it's hardly believe that these people are human but I know as Dr. Field would say hurt people hurt people so perhaps something terrible happened to this young man and he goes on to molest another child but still there's no excuse but I'm going to bring you this information and you come to your own determination what you think about the storyline this is by Fox News Chicago man, 18, accused of molesting cousin, 7, an online view of girls' teacher, classmates. And there is a video in the said commentary. A Chicago teacher and her young students were shocked last week when they reportedly saw an 18-year-old man molesting a 7-year-old girl as the class participated in an online learning session, according to reports. The teacher alerted the school's principal and the man, who was identified as the child's older cousin, was soon arrested, Chicago's Fox 32 reported. Authorities said the suspect, Catrell Walls, a resident of the city's south side, faces a felony charge of predatory criminal sexual assault in connection with the Thursday incident, the station reported. A judge denied bail for Walls when he appeared in court Saturday, the report said. I don't know why. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, a tearful Walls told prosecutors after he was taken into custody. The suspect, the high school senior, has trouble controlling his impulses because he suffers from attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, his defense attorney said, according to Fox 32. The alleged sex crime reportedly happened in the home of the cousin's grandmother, where the girl had been staying during the day for online classes. After the teacher alerted the school's principal, the, the principal contacted the girl's family. Chicago Police and Illinois Department of Children and Family Services. During a visit to the child to get more information about what happened, the girl reportedly told the school principal that Walls had molested her other times as well, the report said. That alleged history factored into the judge's no bail decision regarding Walls. This ongoing history of assault for approximately a year, according to the victim, leads me to believe this is not something that will just stop because I have ordered it to, Judge Charles Beach said. This history and his actions from the case lead me to believe that he is a threat to an individual and the community as a whole. The child was taken to Comer Children's Hospital, police said, according to the Chicago Tribune. In recent years, Chicago Public Schools has increased its support for students who are victims of sexual assault or other harm because teachers and counselors are often the first to spot a problem. School CEO Janice Jackson told the Tribune. Wall's next court date is November 21st, according to Fox 32. And the court appointment on November 21st is pertaining to a gun. So this 18-year-old had a previous uh, charge of having a weapon. And so on the, tw on the 21st of November, he will be going to court for that. Um, this latest court appointment because this story is about a week old. This last court appointment was for this said charge here where you see he has no bail. The judge rightfully so denied him a bail because you see that was the right thing to do. And that is what's wrong with our country right now with the judicial system. It says so many people are committing heinous crimes against other humans and the judge allows them to get bond, bail, and then they go out and they do more mischief and more harm to other citizens while waiting to go to court for another said crime or said crime. Crimes. Plural. Has this 18-year-old been molested by someone in his family? I don't know. We do find out that a lot of sexual predators have been sexually violated by someone they know, a family member. So then they go on to repeat this behavior as children and then into adulthood. She is a young girl. Our victim... And she was molested by this 18-year-old cousin. And she was at a grandparent's house doing her virtual classes. And so here she is in this home where she's supposed to be safe and, and doing schoolwork when it is visible to the people in the classroom. Because if you read the article before this, it gives more dis, uh, descriptive information. But she's in a virtual classroom trying to do her homework. 
The teacher asks the children to take a break. And on this said break, this is the, the cameras were supposed to be turned off per instruction by the teacher. But obviously her camera was still rolling. And obviously this 18-year-old who they want to deem has impulse control, I guess pulled her to the side to have her perform sexual deviances against him. Now, one could say he knew damn well what he was doing because he didn't perform or have her perform a sexual act while she was during the virtual schooling. So let's think about that for a minute. If we want to say he is ill, he doesn't have control over his impulses, then why didn't he have her assault him while the teacher was talking and while she was in session? It just so happened the teacher says, turn your camera off. We're going to take a break. He lures the child over and has her perform oral sex on him. And so now you want me to believe he didn't know what he was doing. He has impulse controls, control issues. And yet his previous charge is of carrying a weapon. So he didn't know nothing about that either. He didn't know any better. You see, sometimes you have to listen to the information that's been brought to you and you can gather the information and come to a sound decision, conclusion about what you just heard. And so my conclusion now, the fact that this 18-year-old has a previous record of having a gun, the fact that the teacher held a break, and this is when he lured the child to perform a sexual act upon himself. That leads me to believe he knew exactly what he was doing. Because if he didn't have any type of self-control, he would have been luring the child during the session with the teacher and the other students. When I first was reading this, I didn't quite understand it. Because I thought, how is it that this is a virtual schooling and he's... It got this kid performing an act on him. I thought maybe he was the one, you know, in a class. And I thought, was he this sick that he would have a child perform an act on him while he's in a virtual classroom? Oh, no. It's the seven-year-old in the class on a break. I bring you these stories, baffling as they are, troublesome as they are, disturbing as they are, heinous as they are, to show you what the world is about and to show you that you cannot trust anyone, that no one is your friend, no one is your family member, your school teacher, your husband, your wife, your mate, your child, that people are prone to do heinous things against other humans. And here we have an 18 year old just going into adulthood luring a child to perform sexual acts upon himself. And the sick part is, she was in the home of a grandmother, grandparent, so we have to ask ourselves, how is it that they didn't know what was going on? Because he was so bold to pull her over from the camera, view of the camera, to perform a sexual act, he didn't think about the other adult that was in the house? Or could it be, there wasn't even an adult present at the house that's supposed to be there watching this child and making sure she's doing her schoolwork. You see where I'm going with that? See, you don't know everything. And at this point, people aren't going to really care. Because what they're going to say is, she's been in this house molested by this cousin for a year. That's what she told the school officials. That she's been molested for a year by this cousin. So one would have to wonder where the hell the adults were while this sexual assault was going on with her. Where was the grandmother? Where are her parents? You all aren't noticing anything peculiar about her? The mother? The guardian of this child? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's almost as if... No, let me never use adjectives. Nobody gives a damn. And I'm saying that. Now, it is said, the little girl said to the official she didn't tell anybody because it was supposed to be a secret. Her daddy would get angry if he knew. Well, I wonder how the daddy feels now. Knowing his child was at the mother or family member's house and she was being molested by the older cousin. Yeah. What are his thoughts? What are his thoughts now? What is the grandmother's, grandparents' thoughts about this older cousin molesting a seven-year-old? And I want to say thank you to the judge. Thank you so kindly for not giving him a bail bond and as you said in court it wouldn't do no good to let him go free
Because there's no way I would think in my right mind he would stop offending of us. And I concur. You all drop your comments below. Tell me what you think. It's like there's no peace in the valley. There's no hope for any of us. It doesn't matter if you're a child or you're, or you're an adult. People are cruel. People are vile. People don't give a damn about you. It's just nobody cares. When you look at his mugshot, you will see that he has been crying in the said video. I mean, in the said picture. And the police also said that he was uh, crying, you know, when he got arrested or whatever. But you know what we say about that? You weren't crying when you were offending your victim. You were getting gratification. Excuse my French. But it's amazing how we, as people, suspects, whomever, cry only when you are caught. That's when you hear tears and people fall out and pass out in court and all that old BS. It's bullshit. Excuse my language. Like, share, subscribe, drop your comments below. Thanks for joining me, Mask Up America. Please go out and vote next week. Your vote counts. You are worthy. Let your voice be heard at the poll booth. I don't know what to say. This, this world is it's too much. To, it's just too much to bear right now. I'm sitting outside getting some fresh air because it is beautiful in the high 10. It is gorgeous out here. And I thought I'd get some fresh air. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Thanks a lot for everything. Thanks for your support. Tracy, I hope you get well out there in the UK. God bless you. I hope you're able to get a COVID test because you need to get that test, obviously, to get your um, your teeth and everything worked on. I'm praying for you. Um, praying for all of you. And pray for me as well. Pray for me as well. God bless all of you. Stay safe. This is Everyday Shenanigans. Bye-bye.